What's happening guys, hope you're all doing very well. In today's video, we are gonna be focusing in on Bitcoin, but we do wanna tie that in with what is happening in crypto right now. So I do believe we're at a very pivotal moment. I believe we've just seen something that completely changes the outlook for crypto. But at the same time, I wanna tie that in with the general economic outlook right now in terms of deciding on potential targets and how this market is likely to look in the long term. So we will be touching on the short term, long term outlook for Bitcoin, as well as just briefly looking at the short term outlook on a couple of different altcoins. And obviously, we're going to speak a little bit about the fundamentals in particular around Credit Suisse and the kind of US bank industry also right now. Okay, so just focusing in on Bitcoin that we have here on the daily time frame two very important pitchforks that you can see on this chart the larger pitchfork to the downside here you can see it has now been broken to the upside and now we're just adhering to this smaller pitchfork which we're going to home in on in just a moment but if we just think about what we spoke about in the last video i was speaking about the bearish outlook and i specifically mentioned invalidation being taking out 25k for a few reasons. So number one was the fact that we had our 200 week simple moving average at that point. It's a very important line. If we just bring on the 200 week simple moving average right now, we can take a look and see how it has been cleanly taken out right here. Okay. I really wanted to see what kind of weekly close we got. We got a weekly close that was very powerful and closed significantly above the 200 week simple moving average. So that, that was a very clean invalidation of the bearish outlook, in my opinion. That was combined with this downward trending upper warning line, which also got taken out completely. Okay, so we're now reversing this downward move. Okay, now that we've taken out that upper warning line, we are reversing that move. Previously, there was the argument that this 200 week simple moving average could truncate the correction. And that was why I had that bearish sentiment. But the invalidation was this point, And we have to, at this point, now readdress how this market looks and take into consideration the fact that bulls are really stamping their mark on this market. Okay, the other key, very important indicator for what was pinning us down was the Camarilla pivots on the weekly time frame. So if we can just pull that up, these are our Camarilla pivots. We are going to take off everything but the Camarilla pivots now and homing on it here okay just to recap why these camera pivots are so important in particular on the weekly time frame if we look at what's happened over the last five years this is 2018 so when you're on the weekly time frame each of these periods represent one represents a year okay so back in 2018 we found support the s4 subsequent year we found resistance at the r4 hovered around the r3 ultimately finished beneath the r3 as a result we went into 2020 and found resistance at the r3 where did we find support s3 you can see how these lines are acting as brilliant support resistance again and again we closed the year of 2020 up way above the r4 that is a confirmation of a strong uptrend and so going into the following year there was a little bit of uncertainty um but ultimately yeah the, this year 2021 we weren't seeing too much use of the camera pivots because it was very much a consolidation year but what was important was the subsequent year of 2022, we found initial support of the S3. We then absolutely flew through it and used the S4 as resistance as we came down. It was a very weak year in 2022. Subsequently, for the year of 2023, I have been closely looking at the R3 and R4 as potential resistance points. Now, we've already tested the R3 as resistance and now we've cleanly broken through it. This was at, again at 25k, which is the same point where our 200 week simple moving averages and it's where our upper warning line on that downtrending pitch will occur. They were all pointing to 25k. The fact that we've taken out that level is so important. It changes absolutely everything. It changes the high time frame bias, okay? Completely flips the high time frame bias. And it was a very clean move through it as well. Big Marabozu candle here on the weekly time frame way above the R3. Now the next level that I have my eyes on in terms of resistance is the R4. As I say, these camera pivots have been incredibly useful over the last five years. So the fact that we finished this year very weak, you look for resistance in the subsequent year at the R3 or R4. R3 is gone. 
Okay, now the R4 is a big question as to whether that will hold as resistance or not. But I believe now we do have a room for a move into this 35k point. Okay, so that is the target that I have for now 35k at that point, I will reassess how this market looks. Okay, because I've got a, a feeling we could get pinned down from there, we could potentially resume a bearish market at that point. Of course, if we just consolidate at this point beneath this level, I would be certainly happy to jump in on a further long in anticipation of R4 getting taken out and we go into a new uptrend and take out all-time highs. That's a big if right now. There's a lot of things to look out for between now and then, in particular the bigger economic outlook. Okay, But that's the kind of play I'm looking out for. So main message here is we have taken out our high time frame bias which was initially bearish at 25k for the reasons i've mentioned and now we have to lean on the side of the bullish outlook so zooming in now we will come down to the daily we can take off these camera pivots and bring on back our annotations so this smaller pitchfork now is what i'm leaning towards now we are a little bit overbought within this pitchfork and we might actually cool off a little bit and consolidate before we push higher on towards that 35k mark okay so that said when you see a strong bullish run you can sometimes get a terminal overshoot where we will push above the upper warning line it's certainly possible also okay but just want to show here we're following this pitchfork very very nicely but we are at a little bit of an overbought level so don't be too surprised to see a little bit of a sideways move that said all other altcoins could show a bit more strength okay so general outlook is that i believe there's a move on into 35k another reason if we just look for sideways levels of resistance you can see here this major swing low the bottom of this consolidation here all very key in terms of um, support and support here that was eventually lost now obviously is another reason for a bit of resistance at this point here okay so we've got the horizontal level of resistance and uh, we've got the upper warning line of this short-term pitchfork and there's also something very important also we were looking at this as an abc expanded flat to here okay now in my opinion that was a five wave move completion up to here I wasn't anticipating this to be the fourth wave of the fifth, which we can now potentially argue. Although, as I say, I think we could go on to 35k and push even higher. Okay, but just talking about potential short term resistance right here. Okay, A, B, C in an expanded flat scenario. In my opinion, this being the fourth wave is a little bit disproportionate to the two, and that's why initially I was looking at that being a five wave completion. However, it's not played out. It has formed another high. So now the argument is, is this a five wave completion here to make the C wave? Now, it is interesting from a Fibonacci point of view, because if you look at the A wave here in an expanded flat, you, you typically follow these uh, Fibonacci relationships where if you look at the length of A, B will often be a Fib relationship to A. So you'll often look see the 1.236 or 1.382 i'd say it's pretty much hit the 1.382 here and so if b is a 1.382 extension of a typically c will be a 1.618 extension of wave a and as you can see from here to here we've got that 1.618 fib extension so you've actually got a very nice perfect abc expanded flat completed here where you've got a 335 into overhead resistance into the upper warning line of the this smaller time frame pitchfork so in terms of looking at bitcoin although crypto is looking strong and some of the alts are looking like they really want to pop right now bitcoin i would say is a little bit overbought okay it had a very nice move here it, it pushed through this bit of resistance at 25k and it's now reached this next level of resistance in and around 28 29k yep so <clears throat> what I'm saying is short term, although yes, it can certainly keep creeping higher from a TA point of view, I'd be a little bit concerned here and I would probably be looking for other markets for a potential bullish move on. OK, so if we can break this, fantastic, because as I say, then we can invalidate this um, Fibonacci relationship for the expanded flat. You know, we can just start heading into that 35K mark. But right now, as I speak, as I'm making this video, there is a reason for resistance at that point. 
However, if we, let's just clean this up and take that horizontal level off. If we just zoom in, well, let's go on the lower time frame. Let's go on the four hourly. Zoom in on this. We are not really seeing a rejection. Okay, there's no impulse to the downside. We are just creeping higher, consolidating and pushing higher and higher and higher. Okay. That said, there is some very important volatility coming ahead this week. Obviously, tomorrow we've got the Fed rate decision. Quite importantly, also, we've got the Swiss interest rate decision uh, on Thursday. So that's going to be pretty important considering what's going on with uh, Credit Suisse right now. Uh, so a lot of volatility coming in. And don't forget, as we sit at resistance, I would personally want to wait to see how we respond to the Fed interest rate decision and probably also the Swiss interest rate decision. Of course, the Fed is the big one. But um, yeah, I would be particularly interested in seeing how the Swiss react also. So two very important catalysts on the near horizon. So that is the kind of short term outlook here. Yeah, so if we are to make it into 35k, how would we look at this? Well, arguably, it's still an expanded flat. Yeah, you could still come into 35k and argue this is an expanded flat. Of course, the C wave is a little bit overextended, but still you can argue it's the expanded flat scenario. And we could still argue going into 35k, you've still got that WXY scenario that we spoke about. So the W down to here, then you get your X wave, which is your ABC, and then you've got your Y wave to come down. So potentially, even up to 35k, you're still in the bear market. Okay. So I'm just being a little bit vigilant of that. I'm not saying it's definitely going to play out like this. I, what I'm saying is I am assessing how the markets react around catalysts at these key points. So the first one is here over the over tomorrow and Thursday, two very important interest rate decisions to be made. I want to see how markets react at that point. If we consolidate rather than getting rejected with an impulse to the downside, if we just consolidate beneath resistance, that's fantastic. It looks like we're setting up for 35k. OK, now, if we move into 35K, I would then be looking out at further catalysts. I think around that point, you've got arguably your the Fed um, debt ceiling decision to be made. Now, that is a big, big decision to be made. OK, that is a huge thing that we need to look out for, you know, because as I say, if they don't increase the in, uh, the uh, the debt ceiling, there is a big chance of a potential default. Yeah which is another reason why bonds are not particularly popular right now. You know, you don't want to invest long term into bonds when <clears throat> there's a potential national default on the horizon. OK, so a lot of uncertainty right now and people are trying to weigh up where to invest their money long term. So but on the subject of Bitcoin, this is how I'm looking at things. As I say, we're looking at a little bit of consolidation, ideally for a bullish move over the next couple of days, which could pushes up to 35k at that point i would reassess again we want to see if we get consolidation at that point or a rejection to determine if we're going to swing bullish or bearish okay so these are the key levels to look at um on that subject just to cover crypto in a bit more detail we can look at ethereum also ethereum i've always considered the fact that we've had a three-wave move down here and i was anticipating a three-wave move up as a recovery as a relief bound so a first second third wave move up to here so i'm looking for a potential move into a 2500 on ethereum to hit this upper median line i always thought it was a bit of anomaly bitcoin coming down when ethereum has not really completed this corrective move but it's now pushed through this very important median line which was holding this pitchfork sorry about the complexity of this chart we've got three pitchforks on the chart just to tidy it up let's take this one off uh, so yeah, just two pitchforks now. So this is the the major pitchfork, first, second, and third pivots. We we held at the median line for a while. We've now pushed through it. I think there's a shout for if Bitcoin is to get to uh, 35k, I think Ethereum can certainly establish 2500. Okay, again, shorter term pitchfork. You're getting quite overbought, close to your upper warning line, and so for that reason, some of the alts look quite attractive also. If we quickly just take a look at Ripple, Ripple's actually had a very good day today, actually breaking out. You can see there's a lot of cores here, which requires some effect to the upside. Long bit of consolidation, just waiting to spring higher. However, looking at it, it doesn't look particularly impulsive, the whole setup. It looks like a three-way move up, again, a corrective move down. So probably a three, three, three to the upside in a similar play out to what 
Bitcoin is doing with its expanded flat. But I think we can potentially move into the upper median line at around point, uh, 0.6 here on Ripple. Okay, potential setup for Ripple. Of course, whatever I'm saying here with regards to uh, these altcoins, it all depends on how crypto reacts around, well, it's not crypto, but Bitcoin reacts around this 28k mark that it currently sits at over the course of the next two days with the Fed interest rate decision and the Swiss interest rate decision. So, but there's better setups than Ripple. Ripple's already started to make a move. Solana and Cardano are the ones that I think are particularly interesting. So this is Solana. Um, so downward pitch fork hovering at the median line for a while. There was a terminal overshoot to the downside, which often uh, anticipates a break to the upside. So we've got a break of the upper median line, strong move here, consolidation. It looks like we, we can certainly push higher, a lot higher here on Solana. Uh, and Cardano is probably an even better setup because we are potentially breaking this long term pitch fork to the downside as we hit this upper warning line. We've been hovering around it for a good while. And I believe this is setting up pretty nice, pretty nicely. It's not yet broken out, but I think that could break out pretty soon and potentially are running as high as 0.9 dollars here for Cardano. That's a big move, of course, but it's it would be taking out this key overhead resistance here if it does push through this upper warning line, in my opinion. As I say, this is all a big if, depending on how Bitcoin reacts over the next couple of days with these interest rate decisions. But these are the kind of setups that I'm seeing over on uh, altcoins. And then with that said, just a quick look at Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance is now reaching the top of this major consolidation where you could argue alts will take control again once we hit this resistance level here on Bitcoin dominance. This has all been looking like you know, we've had consolidation getting ready for the next leg down. Now we've just been bouncing about, bouncing around the kind of upper levels and the lower levels for a while. We're about to reach the upper level again. Will it add as resistance again? There's a good chance of it. That would allow altcoins to take over. As I say, Solana and Cardano could then move at much higher rates than Bitcoin to the upside if that were to play out that way. Okay, so that's the general outlook on crypto so just coming back to bitcoin so uh, we are definitely seeing relative strength in crypto right now i mean the nasdaq today and the dow jones we are seeing a bit of upside yeah a little bit of upside here uh, a bit of strength uh dow also see, seeing a bit of strength here on the dow but compared to crypto crypto is looking a lot stronger right now there's relative strength and it's just making me question whether crypto is going to act as the safe haven asset. So just coming back to Bitcoin, thinking about the alternatives, what what has what has traditionally been a safe haven asset? Well, gold is one, okay? But the problem with gold is although it's looking likely it's going to make a new all-time high, you know, we've been looking at this as a 1 2 3 4 5 wave where we're looking at a new all-time high. It's pretty overbought, okay? We're pretty close to all-time highs. So for a long-term investment, do you really want to put your money in something that is at all-time highs? Okay, so that's gold. It's a little bit overbought, despite the fact that it's always acted as a kind of a safe haven asset and especially a hedge against inflation. <clears throat> then you've got the question about bonds. So this is bonds. Yeah, TLT here. Absolutely collapsed. Absolutely collapsed. Okay, and... Considering the fact that I earlier just mentioned about the potential default if we don't raise the debt ceiling, there's still big questions about that. Would you really want to throw your money into bonds right now? Again, it's a little bit questionable about if, if it is really a safe haven. Then there's real estate, which as we all know is massively overbought right now. And then you've got fiat. Well, fiat's fighting against inflation right now. So you really, although crypto is obviously... Arguably, there's a, a few shady characters in the industry. It's becoming more and more of a potential safe haven asset, you know, especially if you keep your keep your crypto offline in a whole, uh, you know, in a in, in a hard wallet, for example. It's arguably the safest or a safe way of keeping your assets. So. Could it become the safe haven asset? Could that be why we're seeing a little bit of relative strength here within crypto? Okay, so 
those are the kind of the fundamentals. Uh, of course, I believe the general markets are still weighing up what we're seeing in with Credit Suisse here. Uh, we're still waiting to see how investors sentiment is going to unfold. Um, obviously, we've had the US banking uh, concerns as well with Silvergate and uh, what was it Silicon Valley uh, Bank as well. Um, so yeah, still, I think we're weighing up how the markets are going to react to this. So but as I say, from a TA point of view, important to note what we see over the next couple of days with regards to the volatility. So I would not jump in on Bitcoin just yet. I would wait to see how the volatility unfolds over the next couple of days. If we manage to consolidate rather than get rejected, I would be very happy to then look for the, for example, Cardano and Solana potential long positions. Um, but if we get rejected, as I say, I've given the reasons for why that could happen. There's multiple reasons for resistance at this point. But long term, if we consider the fact that we've pushed through the 200 week simple moving average, we've pushed through this upper warning line, we've pushed through the R3 Camarilla pivot on the weekly time frame, there's a good shout for us pushing into 35k. All right. So that's what I'm looking out for the volatility over the next couple of days to unfold and then look out for a potential move into 35k. But invalidation would be looking at this lower time frame pitchfork would be as coming back beneath this median line. I want to see us hold on to strength in this pitchfork. I don't really want to see us dip lower than this median line. If so, that would be getting very close to that 200 week simple moving average again. And I'd be concerned that we're losing this upward trend as soon as we come back in the lower aspects of this median line. Okay, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. But if you do want to further your knowledge more, do check out my website, wave618.com, where I've got my full educational course and we cover crypto and stocks on a weekly basis in detail. Uh, so you can check that out over on the website. Or if you want to further your Elliott Wave knowledge, do check out my Elliott Wave tutorials, which are here on YouTube. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Take care.